an array of stains are used for diagnosis in muscle. Basic histochemical stains include H and E and a modified Gomori trichrome, which are extremely essential. And as in when required, a pass, a congrate, or a congrate or an oil or two could be used, um, depending on the features that are seen on these two. The H and E features I've already elaborated earlier and shown you in the picture, so I won't go into that. Gomori's trichrome, like all trichrome stains, is very uh, useful in sh uh, showing up fibrosis, which is an important component of chronicity. But it also shows other features like ragged red fibers, nemelin rods, and rimmed vacuoles, all of which stain red. So, and I will show you some pictures uh, uh, of these. And enzyme histochemistry, again, a battery of enzyme stains, especially these initial four five stains, are extremely important, without which many diagnoses may be missed. So, I will uh, now elaborate and show you pictures from each of these. This is just a composite picture of H and E of the various uh, diseases that we see uh, in muscle. The first row includes the neurogenic features. While you can suspect uh, it from the H and E appearance, you may not be able to confirm without the special stains. The second row are the inflammatory myopathies, a very important group, a lot of which you can actually confidently diagnose probably on H and E alone. A dermatomyositis, if it has a typical perifascular atrophy and inflammation, an inclusion body myositis, or even granulomatous uh, uh, myositis, one would be able to confidently make the right diagnosis, possibly if one doesn't have access to the other special ancillary techniques. But diagnosing congenital and mitochondrial or storage disorders or the metabolic myopathies can be very difficult. One condition in the uh, congenital group which can be diagnosed on HND is a central nuclear myopathy, where you see that 80 to 90 percent of fibers have central nuclei. So you can make this diagnosis on an HND if you do not have other supportive stains as well. Now, uh, the modified Gomori trichome, as I uh, mentioned, shows up fibrosis. It stains muscle green and the fibrous tissue also green, uh, albeit a little lighter than paler green. But more importantly, it shows up, red, shows up red ragged fibers, which are ragged, as you can see here, and there's a red rim to it. These are nothing but mitochondrial aggregates, and this is a feature seen in mitochondrial myopathy. Rimmed vacuoles seen in conditions, certain inflammatory myopathies, have a red rim and Gomori's trichrome. So this is a good histochemical stain, which aids uh, uh, diagnosis. Now, coming to the enzyme stains, there's a long list of enzyme stains which can be done, but the top few, which are highlighted in red, are mandatory. And we'll know why in the next few slides. They All of them essentially show us the various fiber types. Because muscle can be either, muscle uh, skeletal muscle is of three types, type 1, type 2A, and type 2B. And depending on the condition uh, that uh, the muscle is involved in, you could see various features in these fibers. And therefore, it's important to have at least a bare minimum of these five stains essentially succinic dehydrogenase, nicotinamide adenine dehydrogenase, cytochrome C oxidase, and COX-SDH, a combination of COX and SDH, which is very important in mitochondrial myopathies, and an ATP is done at three different pHs of 9.6, 4.6, and 4.3. So is this hair splitting exercise of enzyme stains done at different pH required? ATP is the only stain where we do it at three different pH of 9.6, 4.6, and 4.3. This is just to actually see the various fiber types, and I will elaborate why. At pH 9.6, the pale fibers are type 1, and the dark fibers are type 2. The reverse happens in all the other enzyme stains. So the dark fibers are type 1 in these and in the other enzyme stains, and the pale fibers are type 1. And pale fibers are type 2, I'm sorry. So it's just the reverse of what we see at pH 9.6. Why is this important? In certain diseases, certain fibers predominate. So you have what is called as a type predominance, a type 1 predominance, that is a predominance of type 1 pale fibers at 9.6, is usually an indicator of a congenital myopathy in children or a myotonic dystrophy. And typically, a type 2 predominance, that is a predominance of these dark fibers, is a feature of motor neuron disease. Similarly, Type grouping, as I've already mentioned, is a feature seen in this inset here. Groups of similar fibers staining similarly is a neurogenic feature. Now, type-specific atrophy. Type-specific atrophy also gives us a clue as to what disease we could be dealing with. So a, a type 1 atrophy is typically, again, seen in congenital myopathies and myotonic dystrophies, whereas type 2 atrophy is more nonspecific 
often seen in disuse. Most of these patients have weakness and therefore don't walk for a long time, or there could have been steroid use, which are easily given for all these conditions. So collagen diseases and a number of other conditions can show non-specific type two atrophy. And one other congenital myopathy, congenital fiber type disproportion cannot be diagnosed unless these stains are done because the differing proportions of the various fibers cannot be highlighted on an HLE stain. Now let's look at NADH. This also gives us information. Some special features are seen. Granular uh, blue ragged fibers are a counterpart of the red ragged fibers that we saw on Gomori's trichrome and is an essential part of diagnosis in a mitochondrial myopathy. In neurogenic atrophies, you get what are known as target fibers. And this looks like a bullseye. There's a central pale area, a lighter area, and then a darker area. So there are three zones of uh, different differing levels of oxidative enzyme activity. And this is typically seen in neurogenic atrophy. So on the special stains also, we see certain features. You may have targets or you may have targetoid fibers as seen here. Targetoid is when you just see two zones, three zones, indicate target fibers, but when there are just two zones of varying stain in either NADH or SDH, they are called targetoid fibers and are a feature of neurogenic atrophy. Other special features include world fibers, which are seen in limb girdle muscular dystrophies and in a number of other conditions. And always one needs to be aware of artifacts of freezing. Freeze artifact can give rise to disappearance of ring fibers, but one really needs to be careful in misinterpreting it and not misinterpreting it, I'm sorry. Now, this is a COX SDH stain. COX is a cytochrome, uh, is the short form for cytochrome C oxidase, which is an, uh, which is, uh, an enzyme of uh, present in the mitochondria. And therefore, absence of COX activity indicates a mitochondrial disease. Now, normal fibers are brown with this stain. So if, and in a normal muscle, most fibers would be brown. But here you can see that there are a lot of pale blue fibers and there are just few, few brown fibers. So these are the ones with retained COX activity, whereas the blue fibers, which have been counterstained by SDH, indicate absence or COX deficiency, which is an indication of mitochondrial myopathy. So having looked at these basic enzyme stains, let's look at what we are more fond of. We are familiar with immunohistochemistry, especially in diagnosis of tumors. Does ISC help in muscle? It does, because it helps demonstrate the absence of protein, especially the example would be absence of dystrophin in Duchenne muscular dystrophies. There could be an ab abnormal accumulation of protein as well, as is seen in myofibrillar myopathies, where you have accumulation of cytoplasmic desmin and dystrophin at times. Apart from this, you could have, we have now ISCs for the major histocompatibility complex one which is upregulated in inflammatory myopathies. Normal muscle lacks MHC1 staining. So if the MHC1 shows a staining, it indicates that you're probably dealing with an inflammatory myopathy. And that is a very important category to make, the, to make because uh, a fair number of these diseases are treatable. Then, of course, we have the uh, CD8 and CD4 stains for the type of, uh, for the T lymphocytes. And those are also important because in inclusion body myositis, one usually finds CD8 cytotoxic T lymphocytes, whereas CD4 lymphocytes are seen in dermatomyositis. So this is just a picture taken from Dr. Gobel's textbook, uh, which has a panel of ISCs uh, for Duchenne, uh, for, uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And... Uh, this is just to show that in the control in the normal muscle, the muscle membrane stains for dystrophin. But in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, where there is a mutation in the gene coding for dystrophin, which is a protein present in the membrane of muscle and stabilizes the muscle membrane, is lost because the genetic mutation for dystrophin leads to loss of normal dystrophin production. So you do not see this typical staining in dystrophin in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Eutrophin is a related molecule which gets overexpressed and upregulated in Duchenne dystrophy. So you get absence of dystrophin and you get eutrophin expression. The reverse happens in limb girdle muscular dystrophy, which is yet another type of dystrophy where you get dystrophin is preserved and eutrophin is lost. So ILC has an important role to play in the diagnosis of dystrophies. <laughs> 